Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Day one is nearing the end here at the Precious Metal Summit Conference. And uh, yeah, still my honor and pleasure to talk to one of the real top silver developer here for New Mine in Argentina. It's John Miniotis, the CEO of Abra Silver Resources. Hey, welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Uh, silver is one of my absolute top favorites, and I think we are in front of a big, big boom, a big, big boom market, to be honest. Yeah, that's really my feeling, despite it's uh, we have a correction today, but who sure. cares? Yeah. Um, you are bringing your Diablilos uh, project into production, and uh, you just uh, gave today a PFS update. So sure. what's the status? Yeah, yeah. So our project is large scale, high quality, advanced stage project, Diablilos. This is silver and gold. Uh, we have a large resource, 250 million ounces, silver equivalent, advanced stage project. So we announced a pre-feasibility study early this year in March mm -hmm. that showed very, very compelling economics. Uh, and then today we announced that we're, of course, updating that pre-feasibility study to reflect some of the recent positive developments that have happened since March. And so the key one has been in Argentina, uh, President Javier Malay has come into power and successfully passed this big economic reform package. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is known as the Riggi regime. Uh, very, very important development uh, for, for us and for the country as a whole. Um, but he's looking to reduce uh, the tax rate instead of 35%. Projects under this Riggi regime will be 25% tax rate. So it's a big, big okay. tax savings. Helps. Also, there'll be no more export duties. The export duties were very high. For gold, it was 8%. Mm -hmm. For silver, it was 4.5% export duties. So in our pre-feasibility study we announced in March, the export duties totaled over $180 million US, Oops. and those will now be eliminated as well wow. going forward. Mm -hmm. And so we're on track to publish this updated pre-feasibility study next month uh, before mm -hmm. year-end, of course. So sometime likely in early December, mm -hmm. we'll look to announce an updated pre-feasibility study We've also optimized the mine plan and tweaked uh, sort of the, the production a, a, a bit. Uh, so we found ways to, to really improve the, the net present value here. And we're really looking forward to, to announcing that study here in very, very short time. Okay, super. Can you remind us shortly on some maybe key figures like what would be production rate per annum? Where yes. do you see the AIC per ounce of silver equivalent? Yes. Yeah. So in the pre-feasibility study, uh, we had a 13-year mine life that was based only on the proven probable reserves. Uh, the production rate for the first five years was over 18 million ounces a year of silver equivalent. Oh, Extremely high. So this would be, in fact, one of the top 10 largest silver mines in the yeah. world once it's up and running. Uh, and it's entirely silver and gold. So when we're talking silver equivalent, it's only converting gold into silver. So this is 100% precious metals. Uh, and importantly, on the cash cost side, all in sustaining cash costs were just under $12.50 an ounce of silver lovely. equivalent. <laughs> very, very high margins under yeah. any foreseeable silver yeah, price yeah. environment. Uh, so yeah, high margin project, uh, obviously large scale, advanced. And again, we're looking to optimize that further. So we wouldn't be surprised if some of the yeah. production profile figures Would improve. Uh, and with the drilling that we're doing, uh, we're completing 20,000 meters of drilling. That'll be completed in Q1, 2025. And all of that's going to get incorporated into a feasibility study next year. Aha. Uh -huh. And so that you can would see be done completely growth. next year, the feasibility? Yes. yes and then you, you are going to project finance. Yeah, in 2026 is when mm -hmm. you would make a construction decision, project mm -hmm. financing, et cetera. Okay, so but what are, yeah, let's say, estimated costs? What do you think? Uh, it'd be just roughly $400 million that's US. That's much. Uh, so for, that would be a 9,000 ton per day plant. Now, we are looking at various scenarios where you could build that up in, in uh, increments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. for instance, you could start off much smaller, potentially mm -hmm. with maybe even just a heap leach, mm -hmm. which could bring the capital cost down initially by about 50% or so. So you could start off with a $200 million project, get that up and running, and then you scale it up and ultimately you'd be producing 18 million ounce a mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to raise all that money up front mm -hmm. uh, and you know build uh, mm -hmm. a very, very large silver project right out of the gates. Yeah. If you wanted to take some time, you could build it up incrementally, start off with a heap mm -hmm. leach approach, which would be much cheaper, easier to raise that amount mm -hmm. of capital. Mm -hmm. And then as you're, you're profitable and generating uh, free cash flow, you can then look to, to scale it up. Absolutely. So lots of optionality here. Okay, what is the share of the silver and the gold? It's roughly 60% it? silver, 40% gold. Mm -hmm. But in the first five years, it's much more silver dominant because we have this high-grade jack deposit. 
And that is over 80% silver. Mm -hmm. So in the early years, it's over 80% silver. Mm -hmm. And then towards the back end of the mine life, it actually becomes about 75%, 80% gold. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, okay. it's 60-40 mm -hmm. silver gold. Could you imagine to sell some gold forward uh, to finance the mine? Does it make if, sense? Yeah, I mean, we would I mean, consider that down the road. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Could be yeah, it, an it's, idea. It's on the table. I mean, yeah. we wouldn't just you know rule out anything. I wouldn't say that's our favorable mm -hmm. uh, financing strategy mm -hmm. uh, but it's something that we would consider just just along with everything else mm -hmm, absolutely what is about royalties because the companies are desperately searching for royalties maybe sure. you get a better deal <laughs> sure sure yeah there is a one percent nsr yeah. on this project right now that's yeah. owned by emx royalties yeah. again one percent is very very low mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, very manageable we like to keep it that way but yeah we'd consider again increasing the royalty or a stream or mm -hmm. you know all, all of that would be under consideration at the okay. right time super are you financed until the feasibility study yes so you're not so, under pressure so we're That's financed important. well until next year until 2025 mm -hmm. uh so yeah for this year fully financed of course uh mm -hmm. to, for, to announce the updated pre-feasibility study mm -hmm. complete this drill program that's well underway which will be complete in q1 Uh, and then after that, obviously, we'll reevaluate mm -hmm. depending on how much more drilling we want to be doing next year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, fully financed now for, mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future here. Fantastic. Super. You have also a second project, I think, in Argentina. Yes. Maybe you want to give us an update there, too. Yeah. So we have an early stage project. It's called La Cuepita. Mm -hmm. And this is in the San Juan province of Argentina. That's a copper, uh, copper porphyry mm -hmm. uh, target there. Uh, there in January of this year, we brought in tech Uh, as a partner. Uh, so nice. yeah, excellent, excellent partner to mm -hmm. have there. Uh, and we brought them in under an option agreement mm -hmm. whereby they can earn up to 80% of the project. Mm -hmm. And to do that, they have to meet certain, uh, certain criteria. So they have to invest mm -hmm. over $20 million dollars in exploration, make payments to us, et cetera. Um, so yeah, they've announced as well, or we just announced here, Uh, part of our press release that tech expects to be drilling early mm -hmm. next year mm -hmm. as part of their second phase of drilling at La Cuepita. So it's positive news. Obviously, Super. they're a very, very strong strategic partner for us to have mm -hmm. as well. They're advancing La Cuepita nicely. Mm -hmm. We're hoping they make a big discovery and then we could be left with a minority interest in that project yeah, down the road. Easily because you don't have to pay for it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, a win -win. it's a win-win. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win-win, definitely. Yes. Super. Um, your shareholder structure. I ask that sure. very often, but I think in your case, it's also very important because with a strong shareholder uh, uh, structure and alignment of large shareholders, I mean, a project like yours could be financed easier, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Who, who so we have a, a tight shareholder structure. Mm -hmm. So in total, we have 125 million shares out. Mm -hmm. uh, 10% of that is held by Eric Sprott. Mm -hmm. And so he's been an investor now since 2020 Super. or so. Mm -hmm. So long-term oriented investor. Uh, and then earlier this year, we raised $20 million. That was $10 million by Kinross Gold, uh, who has 4% mm -hmm. of the company. Mm -hmm. And Central Puerto invested uh, $10 million for 4% as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so both excellent key strategic shareholders. Mm -hmm. So in, to in total, when you add Eric Sprott, Kinross, Central Puerto Management, we own almost a quarter of the shares outstanding. So mm -hmm. it's about 22, 23% uh, held by insiders yeah. and, and sort of strategic investors. Super. Okay. That helps a lot, I would say, especially yes, if they're very good about Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's great. yeah. Fantastic. Super. Um, of course, as a future silver producer, what's your take on the silver price for next year? Yeah. So look, I, I agree with your comments initially. I think silver is uh, clearly in early early stages here of a major bull market. Mm -hmm. You're seeing gold march mm -hmm. to all-time highs on a very, very consistent basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, now we're having a healthy correction, I would say. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not concerned whatsoever. Yeah. But with gold prices trending in the right direction, of course, You see gold as being one of the few risk-free assets available right now. Uh, lots of emerging central mm -hmm. banks obviously buying gold, uh, reducing mm -hmm. their exposure to U.S. dollars and, and putting that into physical gold. You'll see silver play catch up. Silver is obviously you know, starting to perform mm -hmm. well, but has not you know, skyrocketed as of yet. Yep. And so I think there will be... Part of the cycle here where you'll see silver significantly outperforming. Mm -hmm. And so you could see the silver to gold ratio come back down, whether it's going to go to 50 or 60 to mm -hmm. one. Uh, but yeah, with gold approaching $3,000, let's say down the road, having a $50, $60 silver price mm -hmm. longer yeah. term, maybe next year or mm -hmm. you know slightly thereafter, I think is entirely reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that gets us back 
to the, the $50 high, which we hit several years ago. So even on a nominal basis, silver yeah. is not trading. No. I think it's one of the only commodities that has not reached its nominal all-time high in Definitely. recent history here. Mm -hmm. So going back to $50, $60 longer term as your silver price, yeah. I think is a very realistic scenario. Mm -hmm. But importantly for us, our cash costs are $12.50. So even yeah. under, we don't need obviously $50. I mean, yeah. it would be incredibly profitable if that happens. But even mm -hmm. under $20, $23 price scenario, mm -hmm. this is still a very highly economic project. Yeah, so we're always very, very conservative when we put out the pre-feasibility studies mm -hmm. and obviously all the economic studies. You plan for almost a downside price environment. But yeah, on the upside, I think this project would have exceptionally high, high margins. Absolutely. I see it the same way. That was a great final word. Thank you very much for the update. And uh, we wish you well for the updated pre-feasibility. Look forward on that. And then really rock the feasibility because we need that silver. Absolutely. Thank Super. you very much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was John Miniotis from Apra Silver Resources and uh, yeah, the CEO, of course. Uh, Great project, I would say. Now the updated PFS is coming. Then next this year, uh, next year the really uh, feasibility study, bank of feasibility study, and it goes into the production decision 2026 latest. And then let's move it forward. So that is a fantastic project. What the world really needs, because don't forget we are in the sixth year this year of a silver deficit worldwide. This will persist definitely. 2025, 2026, we will stay in the deficit because of. All the things you, uh, you've heard from me before with solar, with electromobility, et cetera. And uh, we do not have those minds in the world. We need them desperately. So great company. Check it out. Thanks for watching us. And bye-bye from Switzerland.